the most simple one is what we call sort of a delta or a scaling method. And a delta method is what you can use, for example, for temperature if you only uh, need to get a, a simple ID, for example, how much warming there is. And what you will do is you will use your 21st century signal. Uh, so, for example, the, uh, uh, the climate model says it's going to be uh, two degree warming, uh, and you use that uh, uh, to put that on top of your 20th century data. So, for example, you have your data set for the 20th century or for another historical period, and the climate model says it's going to be two degree warmer. warmer. You add two degrees to your data set and use that to, to do your analysis. A scaling method would look at a percentage difference, huh? and you can use that for precipitation. For example, uh, um, your climate model shows that there is a 10% increase in precipitation, and you add that 10% to all your data from your historic data set. So that, that's what we call the delta method, which is a very simple method. But for, for some issues, such as wind speed or radiation, that might be, uh, that might be good enough. Um, you can also add to that a correction for the, for the variability. So you might not only want to correct for the average, for the mean, but also for the, for the variance. And then you compare the variance in your observed data with your model data and correct for that. Now, another one is where you actually correct for the whole uh, uh, distribution. And this is often very important uh, uh, for rainfall because often the distribution in the climate model for the rainfall and the distribution in the, in the observed data is different. And the climate models tend to have too many rain days and their extremes uh, tend to be lower than what is observed. So then you need to uh, correct for that. And you can correct for different parts of your uh, distribution differently. For example, for the, for the median rainfall, how you add a, a different percentage than for the extreme rainfall. What you see here is uh, an example of a PDF correction. So in the figure on the right, you see a comparison of the intensity in rainfall observed in terms of millimeters per day compared to the intensity of the model precipitation. And you see two things here, that in general, the climate model has uh, too, too many rain days. So it has a sort of positive bias in the in the uh, low intensity rainfall event. So it has too many low rainfall intensity events, but it has uh, too, many, too little high rainfall intensity events. So what is happening when you go from the original, from the climate model to the corrected one, is that the low intensity events will, in the corrected uh, situation, have less rainfall, while the high intensity event, and here it's important to look at the different scales, you will see you go from 32 millimeters to here 42 millimeters. So different events are corrected in a different way. And you can combine this method also with, first of all, reducing the number of day, rain days. So what we sometimes have to do, you have this output from your climate model, you remove all the low rainfall days to get the same number of rainfall days in your, um, uh, in your climate model as in your observations as a point of uh, correction. Again, the problem is here, we can do that for the past and we can transfer that to the future, but whether the same transfer function uh, is actually valid for the future is very questionable. Actually, we know that there is a change, but we don't know what the change is. Uh, you can use transfer corrections, downscaling methods uh, as the PDF example is going. You can also use quantile methods or a, a DBS method. The pros of these are that they're relatively uh, easy to use. Um, the cons is that only part of the variability is actually uh, explained by using these. There's often multi multivariate correlations which you have to take into account. And actually, for the extreme events, it gets a bit uh, problematic. Uh, also, because extreme events are, by definition, extreme and rare, so it is difficult to, uh, to correct for that. And sometimes you need uh, uh, specific type of statistics for that. Now, you can also use uh, weather generators. That's often uh, a lot in, in agriculture. Uh, I know a lot of people who look at climate change impacts in agriculture, which use weather generators. Um, it is much less done in, in hydrology, and that is mainly due to that con, because it is not very good in reproducing interannual and decadal climate variability. That is often important in hydrology. 
but it is good to actually exactly reproduce most of the uh, observational uh, statistics.